If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, we are going verse by verse through the book of Romans. Uh, we uh, have been talking about a lot of things, and uh, really Paul has set the foundation here, uh, but this particular verses that we are looking at, he lays the foundation for what Romans is all about, and it is about salvation, folks. The absolute most important thing in a person's life is to be saved, folks. I'm telling you, heaven is real, but hell is real also. And it does not do me, my heart really hurts when I think of the many, many people uh, that are going to go there. And it's our job to not just uh, read the Word of God, but to study the Word of God and also be able to share that uh, salvation and the plan of salvation with others. And you are going to see the plan of salvation from here through pretty much the rest of uh, Romans. Today I want to talk to you about justification. Just one word, but uh, this is a two-part. Uh, there's justification, part one to, today, and then next Sunday we'll do justification. And if you have a bulletin and want to follow along in our outline, uh, number one, we are all guilty. Okay, We are all guilty of breaking God's law, is what it's talking about. We all are sinners, and we all know that, and the Word of God uh, says that. Number two, we do not have righteousness on our own, okay? We can do things right sometimes, okay? But the righteousness of God in man's righteousness is not the same. We need God's righteousness in our hearts. And the third thing is we are all, we are all saved by faith. Faith is the key, folks. Faith is the key. Uh, works will not save you. Okay, works will not save you. Going to church will not save you. Being baptized does not save you. Okay, it is faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. So we need to remember these uh, three things as we speak today. You know, the Apostle Paul has explained that we are all sinners. He now has to share how a sinner can be saved. The theological term for salvation is justification by faith. Justification is the act of God whereby he declares the believer, uh, believing sinner, righteous, uh, righteous in Christ on the basis of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. No sinner can justify himself before God. God puts the righteousness of Christ on our record in place of our their faith and trust in Christ. God declares him righteous. God then looks at us as though we have never sinned at all. Isn't that a blessing? What a blessing. I want to read that again. God looks at us as though we had never sinned at all. What a Savior we serve. What a, Lord, what a wonderful Lord in Jesus we have. Justification. We are all guilty. Look at verse 19, Romans 3.19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. And Paul is addressing the Jewish leaders again. Paul is saying, you guys look good, you say the right things, you do the right things, but you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. They would not recognize Jesus as the Messiah. Matter of fact, when Jesus was on earth, all they did was give him problems. All, did, all they did was question his deity. And he's saying, basically, that the law will not save you. We can obey laws, and I know people like laws and rules, and we want those listed out there. But I am telling you, the, the whole uh, point of this first part is the law cannot save you. You have to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And folks, everyone is accountable unto God. Everyone uh, is accountable to God's divine law. 
And even with the Gentiles, they did not have and they did not know the law like the Jews. But yet God uh, convicted them in their conscience, in creation. They knew of God and knew, they knew a God was out there. So we are all without excuse. You cannot be born in America and not know and, or see a copy of the Word of God. It is everywhere. And that's what they're saying. The Jewish leaders were wanting to follow the rules and think they are saved or righteous by the law. Now look at verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And that's what the whole uh, gist of these first two verses is talking about. Folks, the law is a good thing. There are other camps and people that think we don't have to obey the Old Testament laws. But I'm telling you, the Ten Commandments are still the Ten Commandments. We need to do those things. But it's not just the Ten Commandments. It's the whole law of God. And that's what Paul was saying. And I realize at this point, these, you know, these things had not even been written. Romans had not been uh, written when he was teaching these things. But you still, in your heart of hearts, you would have to realize there is something out there. There's a God, a divine maker out there. I just didn't get here on accident. And people were, especially the Jewish leaders, were depending on the law. No sinner can justify himself before God. We are all guilty. We are all lost uh, until we come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Go to Galatians 3 with me. Galatians 3. I want you to see this. And you have to understand, Galatians is a book of uh, God the law versus grace. And in Galatians 3, verse 19, the Bible says, what purpose then does the law serve? And folks, the law convicts us of sin, but cannot uh, save us. We know we are wrong when we break one of God's laws. And it says, it was added because of the transgressions. And you can go back to the fall Okay, where Adam and Eve sinned. And when they sinned, folks, we were all bound in sin. We are all born in sin, Psalms 51, 5 says. Till the seed should come uh, to whom the promise was made, and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now the seed there is a capital S, and that is Jesus Christ Word, okay, the law, and the law was written basically for the Old Testament folks until Jesus came, and Jesus came to fulfill the law. Do you realize that he had never sinned? He had never broken a law. There's not one of us here that can say that. That's what makes him deity. He is God in human flesh, and so the law was there for a purpose, but it could not save. They had to believe, and folks, here's the thing where we are such an advantage. They had to believe in a coming Messiah, something that had not happened yet. It has happened. We know of Jesus' life. We have record of but the law was written so that we know that we were sinners and that we would seek a God, is what he is saying. Should come to whom the promise was made. And this goes back to Genesis chapter 12. The promise was made to Abraham. You are going to be the father of the, the Jewish nation. And that promise, folks, a promise is a promise. God is not going to break that promise. And the Jews are God's special people. And the law is a special thing. But the law will not save anyone. And it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. And again, he was talking about Moses there. Moses took the laws down. Moses interceded uh, for the children of Israel. He was the leader. In verse 20, now a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God 
is one. See, God himself was the mediator in that first promise or that first covenant. God himself went to Abraham and made that promise. And so we're looking at two different things, the law and a covenant, okay? And then look at verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? Sure it's not. And he says that. Paul says, certainly not. It has two different things. The covenant was a covenant with God's chosen people. Folks, the Jewish nation will all be God's chosen people, but just because you're a Jew doesn't make you saved. You still have to come to Jesus Christ through the blood of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the law cannot give you righteousness. And, and Paul is really driving this point home because that is the problem in his day and age when Jesus was here. They thought, if I obeyed the law, if I looked right, if I did the, the, uh, the ceremonies, if I went to the temple and prayed, I did all these things, that I was right with God and I had righteousness. And they were not. They were not that way. Verse 22, but the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. And folks, I'm telling you, when Jesus came, everything changed. It's not that we don't need the law. We need to teach Old Testament principles. But just like today, there are people that think because their dad was a preacher or they were in church or they were baptized that they are saved. And folks, I'm telling you, you must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ by faith. You must repent of your sins Paul is saying this in verse 24, Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And we know what tutors do. Tutors help us. They help us learn. The law helps us learn about God. But the law could not save you. But after faith has come, we are no longer under the tutor. And it's not that we just throw the Old Testament away, folks. It's simply saying, now... Jesus Christ. Folks, I am telling you, it, theologically, as Christians, Jesus Christ is the center of everything we do. It's not about us. It's not about our church. It's about the Lord and Savior. That's why he is saying, and he's trying to get these Jewish leaders to understand, you look good, you sound good, you, you memorize scripture, you say these things, but I'm telling you, you do not recognize Jesus for who he is. And if you don't do that, folks, you are not going to heaven. So we are all guilty before God. But not only are we all guilty before God, we all need God's righteousness. We need God's righteousness. Look at verse 21. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And you have to understand, when you think of the Old Testament, and you go to Isaiah 53, I'm telling you, it is a description of Jesus Christ. It is a description of the coming Messiah. It is a description of him dying. Even the Old Testament prophets there were several of the Old Testament prophets that talked about Jesus. You can see Jesus in all the Old Testament books. So you can't use this excuse of the New Testament wasn't written, we don't know about that. Folks, I'm telling you, Jesus is all over the page of the Word of God. Jesus is our doctrine. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our Savior. And that's what Paul was trying to tell them. You are hanging on to this law, and you are condemning yourself. Remember last week, there were four passages he used against them, and every one of those 
Old Testament passages uh, were, were, you know, where the law was. He was quoting Old Testament. They should have known this is what I'm trying to say. But they were blind to it. Satan was blinding them, thinking that they were good enough, thinking that if they were religious enough, that they would get into heaven. Folks, I'm telling you, there's a huge difference between religion and righteousness. Paul's teaching righteousness here. And the only way we can be right with God is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Verse 22, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. See, what they looked down on was the Jew looked down on the Gentile. They did not really want them in their church. They did not really want them, uh, you know, fellowshipping with them. Them, you know, dogs. You know, they they would, uh, you know, if they were walking down the street and they saw one coming on the same side of the street, they would literally go to the other side because they didn't have want to have anything to do with them. The Bible says we all need God's righteousness. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in His sight. And folks, we should as a church, and I pray to God that you as an individual believes everyone everywhere needs Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter the color of the skin. It doesn't matter what they wear. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter what they have on. He's saying all all are going to all are sinners and then he says in in the next verse even the righteousness of god through faith in christ to all who believe for there is no difference in this verse it's part of the roman road for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god folks we all sinned we weren't looking for god god came looking for us and i'm telling you he chose you He showed you salvation. He showed you through the Holy Spirit uh, speaking to your heart. You are a sinner and you need to be saved. And my prayer today is that if there's one person here that doesn't know for sure, 100% sure, that if they were to die today, they would go to heaven, they would realize today that they need to be saved. That's what the whole book of Romans says is about that's what romans is the reformation period i'm telling you it came from the book of romans and that's why i chose this book it not just that it followed acts but time is getting short folks time is getting short you look at everything that is happening and we don't have time to wait We need to tell everyone about the good news of Jesus Christ. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in uh, Christ Jesus. What what is he saying? He's just saying, I'm just telling you folks, grace, faith in grace is what we need. Justification means being right with God. Justification means knowing God as your personal Lord and Savior. Justification is salvation. And it says, verse 25, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were uh, previously committed. Now, folks, to understand this and all that he is saying here, the the propitiation was the payment for our sin. And, folks, I cannot tell you how important the blood of Jesus Christ is. Before the cross, the Old Testament way was on the Day of Atonement. And the, the, the priest would go into the Holy of Holies. He had two goats with him. And the lots was, was thrown to decide which one was hit, the, which one would go which place. And he would, he, would, he would kill that sacrifice of the goat. All right? And he would spread that, uh, the blood of the sacrifice uh, on the Ark of the Covenant and, on, and literally on the people that day. And then the other goat he would take 
and he would release that goat. He would pray over that goat the sins of the people, and he would let that goat go out in the wilderness. And that is what the blood, that blood atonement, that animal sacrifice going to the temple in, for the priest and the holy of holies, that was the way they got right with God. And it would roll back the sins of the people for one year. And those sacrifices on the day of atonement happened year after year after year until Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. You remember his crucifixion? After he died, the veil of the temple was torn in two. Why? No more animal sacrifices. There's no more, folks. Jesus gave his blood. Folks, it was perfect blood. I'm not sure anybody has perfect blood. Okay? I mean, you. there's two things. Your, your heart keeps you alive, and that blood circulation keeps things going. But Jesus' blood shed, I'm telling you, paid for your sin. And that's what, Paul, that's what Paul is trying to get him to understand and get these folks to understand. The only way you can be right with, with God is through the blood of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, look with me. 2 Corinthians 5, just one verse. I want you to see this. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For he, which means God, made him, which is Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. He became sin for us. He paid the penalty of sin. All of our sin was laid on Jesus Christ, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. I got news for you, folks. I am not righteous, and neither are you. God, through Jesus Christ, paid the penalty for our sins. And we are righteous. The only way we are righteous is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, Steve, we sing these songs about the blood. I love to sing the songs about the blood because Jesus' blood, I'm just telling you, his blood was different. It is something that is amazing. Turn to Hebrews chapter 9 with me. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9, verse 11. Hebrews 9, 11. But Christ came as the high priest of the good things to come. He is our high priest. Folks, we don't have a high priest as far as a man, an earthly person. We don't have to confess our sins to a man. We can come boldly, the Bible says, to the throne of God. Jesus is our high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle. He was perfect. In every way, he was the perfect lamb of God, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. He wasn't born, Joseph was not his biological father. He was placed in the person of the Holy Spirit in Mary. He was different, folks. He did not have a sin nature. Then verse 12, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Folks, I'm telling you, it is forever. He died on the cross. He is at the right hand of God. And if we invite Jesus to come into our life, if we trust in the blood atonement, if we ask for forgiveness of our, our sins, folks, it is forever. That's why we as Baptists believe once saved, always saved. And I like to throw another word in there. Once saved, truly saved, always saved. Because Matthew speaks of a false profession. There are people that just have head knowledge. They know the right things to say. Some people do it through what I call fire insurance. Okay? They don't want to go to hell. 
Well, folks, you're not, you know, being saved is more than not wanting to go to hell. It's giving your total being, your total person to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Look at verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of our flesh. How much more, and again, he's talking about the Old Testament sacrifices. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve a living God? Folks, you ought, to, you ought to shout about this here. We don't have to sin. We are, we are children of God. I'm not saying we won't sin, but he, I'm telling you, our goal in life should be to be like Jesus. He was the perfect sacrifice. He forgives all our sins. He will not bring those sins up again. Verse 15, and for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, again, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. What did Jesus do, folks? God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die in our place. And Jesus loves us so much that even from the cross, being nailed hands and feet, says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Folks, I'm telling you today, you need to thank God that you are forgiven. You are a forgiven believer. All right? Our sins were nailed to the cross and Jesus' blood paid for our sins. When you think of justification and all these, these words that we are talking about, it's all surrounds God in Jesus. Folks, he did it for you. If you were the only one, I believe with all my heart, if you were the only one, he would have done it for you. Don't ever take salvation lightly. Don't ever take salvation lightly. For granted, God loves you. Jesus paid for your sins. And he redeemed us. He purchased us a place in heaven. So we see we are all guilty. We all need God's righteousness. And we are all saved by faith. Let's look at this last part. And it says, verse 26 to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. What is he just? He is just in, in punishing our sins. Folks, we don't deserve to go to heaven. We are sinners. We are sinners. We don't deserve that. He was just. He is just every sinner. I'm just telling you, he gives everyone a chance to be saved. But he is also the justifier. We can be saved through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 27, where is boasting then? It is included. And again, he's talking about how proud the, the Jewish leaders were. You know, they had the robes, they had the words, they had the prayers, they had all this, and they just looked down on others. And Paul is just saying, guys, you're fooling yourselves. You are fooling yourselves. It doesn't matter what you have on. The outside doesn't matter. What matters is what's in your heart. Is Jesus Christ in the, your heart? Is the Holy Spirit an active part of your life? By what law? Of works? No, but the law of faith. Folks, I'm telling you, it is faith in Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, in Hebrews, there's a whole chapter. Chapter 11 talks about faith and how important faith is. Verse 28, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. He said all that. He kept preaching to them and telling them and telling them. And that is the bottom line, folks. We are justified by faith. 
faith. Verse 29, or he, uh, the God, is the God of only the Jews? Is he also not the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, since there is one God who will just justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. He's saying it doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, we all come to the cross the same way. I'm telling you, the, the, the ground at the cross is level, folks. Everyone has to come God's way. There are people even telling us, tell us, you know, uh, well, you are, you're not being inclusive in this. Yes, we are, folks. Everyone, everywhere needs Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter whether you are a Jew or a Gentile. Verse 31, do we then make void the law through faith? He's saying certainly not. We just don't throw the law away, folks. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. We still need to read the Old Testament. I'm reading through the Bible again this year. I just decided to do it on my own. And I'm telling you, uh, I'm, I'm in Exodus now, and I'm, I'm ahead. I, I like to stay ahead. Does anybody else read and like to stay ahead on their days? But I'm telling you, what they look at, especially the Old Testament, they look at the law given to Moses and the thunder and lightning and the smoke and all that stuff, and they just, wow, wow, wow. And, and folks, it is. It was an awesome thing. So I'm not trying to downplay that. But I'm telling you something that is even more exciting than that happened at Golgotha, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart fell away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the days. Folks, the reason our world is messed up, matter of fact, look back at verse 18 in our text. I know it's not on there, but 18, there's no fear of God before their eyes. Does that not describe us as a nation? We no longer fear God. But I got news for you, folks. When he comes... My Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, Jesus is Lord. Folks, we got to tell them, we got to tell people. There's still people that don't believe in God, they don't respect God. What does it matter if someone makes fun of us? What does it matter if someone doesn't believe us? But do you know what? i tell you why a lot of people don't believe. And it's because of so-called Christians. Because people are looking at our lives, and they're looking at their lives, and they're thinking, there's not a big difference between me and you. Folks, I am telling you, salvation is real. We need to be Christian about everything we do. It is faith alone that saves us. Ephesians chapter 4 Go with me to, excuse me, Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. The Bible says in verse 4, the God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ. Folks, it's all about faith and it's all about grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. And I close with this verse. Galatians 2, go back to Galatians 2 with me. Galatians 2, verse 20. Look down at verse 20. Paul writes this, I have been crucified with Christ. Folks, we need to die. It's salvation. We need to die to ourselves. At salvation, it's no longer about us. It's about God. It's about Jesus. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. 
Folks, I believe with all my heart there is no addiction that you cannot conquer with God's help. You have Jesus. You have the Word of God. You have faith. You have Jesus' example. You have Paul's example who is writing this. I truly believe he's one of the greatest Christians that ever walked the face of this earth. And he's saying, but Christ lives in me and the life I now live in the flesh, and it's not saying that I live by my flesh, we are in this world for a reason and for a purpose. It's to show others what true salvation is. That's what he's saying. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is summing up everything he is trying to say in Romans chapter 3. Now notice this last part. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Folks, if you can get saved through the law, Christ wouldn't have had to go to the cross. But it didn't happen that way. The law cannot save you. Being, uh, you know, and again, we can't be perfect, but trying to do right cannot save you. The law can't save you. It's Jesus Christ. And folks, even under grace, folks, we as Christians walking in this world do not need to be a disgrace to grace. It's like what Paul said last time. Well, we just need to sin, not, not what he saw, but what he was refuting. His defense was, and that's what some were saying, well, if I'm already saved and I know I'm saved, then I can sin all I want. That way I can have more grace. Well, folks, that's not what he's saying. Folks, we need to follow Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what the world is doing. It doesn't matter what others are doing. We need to wholeheartedly fall, follow Jesus Christ. We have been justified. We are being sanctified. The propitiation has been paid. The price has been paid. And we need to walk in the newness of life. Father, thank you for this day. God, I thank you for the ministry of justification God you are just you are the justifier and God you had mercy on us you didn't give us what we deserve God your grace has given us what we don't deserve we don't deserve your mercy or your grace but God you love us and God I pray if there's one here that doesn't know you God I pray that you would just give them the courage to walk the aisle and just say, I need to be saved today. God, I pray the Holy Spirit would speak to that person. And God, I pray we as Christians, we would turn to you, God. You have given us so much. You have given us health, family, life, abundant life, many blessings. And God, I pray we would just have attitudes of gratitude for that. And God, I pray that we would live for you every day. God, I pray that when we get the chance, when we get the opportunity, that we would talk to people about their salvation and about whether they're truly saved or going to heaven or not. Folks, it is a thing of life and death. So, God, I pray that people could see Jesus in us. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for all that you have done. And, God, this is your church. This is your invitation. This is your time. You do with it what you choose. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?